In our fourth session on the five solas of the Protestant Reformation, we're focusing on faith alone. And we're trying to understand the biblical foundations for these five solas. I tried to make clear in the first session that the gospel of how we are made spiritually alive, even though we were dead spiritually in our trespasses and sins, and the good news, the gospel, that God has become 100% for us, though his wrath had been against us. That's the great transition that the gospel brings about, life instead of eternal death, and God for us instead of against us in wrath forever in Christ. And the point of the five solas goes like this. Our being made spiritually alive and God's becoming 100% for us in Christ, even though we are sinners, is by God's grace alone, on the basis of Christ alone. And in this session, we focus on received through faith alone, so that all things lead ultimately to the glory of God alone with Scripture, which is why we're focusing on texts in these sessions with Scripture alone as the only final authority teaching these truths. So here we go, texts. And you assess, you test whether you think these texts show that our getting right with God so that he is 100% for us happens through faith alone. We hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. So justification, that is being declared just and righteous, innocent before a holy God, wonder of wonders that the ungodly like us could be declared justified by faith apart from works. In other words, our becoming better people is not the foundation of our justification. It's faith which receives Christ and all that he has done. So faith is looking away from ourselves, not looking to anything we do, but away from ourselves to something God has done. And in looking to that, God counts us righteous. And therefore, since works of the law contribute nothing, it is faith alone which receives and embraces that foundation for our justification. Same thing in Galatians 2.16, only more fully. We know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ, so that we also have believed in Christ Jesus, in order to be justified by, by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, because by works of the law, no one will be justified. He's stressing to, to go the route of trying our best to keep God's commandments as the way of providing a foundation for our justification won't work. The only way is to stop trying to provide our own foundation and to trust Jesus as the foundation, to believe in Christ Jesus, to put our faith in Christ. So that's the alone means of taking our stand on Christ. Christ is the foundation. Faith is the 
one and only means by which we can rest on it. That's what faith is designed to be. Here's a real strong analysis of what faith is, which shows how unique and solitary it is. Now, to the one who works, not believes, but works, his wages, so works correspond to what you earn, his wages are not counted as a gift. You want to go the route of works? You don't go the route of receiving a gift, but earning wages. His due, you get your due. But to the one who does not work, he forsakes this way of life, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly. So we don't shape up before we get declared shaped up. <laughs> we, we get declared just before we're just which means that the foundation of our being declared just is not in ourselves, but in a righteousness that is God's or, or Christ's. And, and we take our stand on it, we embrace it by faith. But the one who believes in him, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. So God looks at our faith embracing Christ, and counts that faith as righteousness. So it is faith, not any contribution of works, that puts us in a right relationship with God on the basis of Christ, and it is grace. It is faith alone that puts us there. So, Paul says in 5.1 of Romans, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It would be disingenuous, wouldn't it, if this really meant we have been justified by faith and enjoy peace, not really by faith, not really justified, but there have to be things added to this in order for us to be justified. The, the statement is clear and straightforward and meant to give us tremendous encouragement and confidence and restfulness of spirit. We have been justified by faith, not faith plus, plus, plus. It is faith alone which puts us in a position of having Christ as our peace through our Lord Jesus Christ, by faith, we are justified. And now he, he really stretches to make sure we see how uniquely gracious and solitary this role of faith is. By grace, you have been saved through faith. So faith in us corresponds to grace in God, if we go another route besides faith in order to take our stand on Christ for our justification, we are going to jeopardize the grace of God. This is not your own doing. It's not, not from you, literally. So this faith, this grace, that whole process there is not from you. It is the gift of God not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, not our workmanship. He, he brought us about. He created us in Christ Jesus, and he didn't do it as a result of our works, but for good works. So, our standing as saved people is not owing to our works, but works come in after faith and after being saved by his grace. And we exist for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So you have faith here. 
And this faith is not from us and not from works. It is not from us. It is a gift, a gift of God. And it is not from works. It is for works, for good works, to make crystal clear that this faith is in a unique and solitary role in setting us right with God. The faith itself is not coming from us, and the faith is now, itself is not coming from works or being joined by works. Works come in after faith for works. Now, here's the great problem that we have in establishing the biblical foundation of faith alone because James says something that on the face of it is diametrically opposed to what I'm arguing and what the Reformers argued. So let's let James talk and see if we can understand how they fit together, Paul and James. Faith, if it does not have works, is dead. Now, that is fundamentally important for understanding what he's about here. Faith that doesn't have or produce works is a dead faith, and a dead faith justifies nobody. So he's going to stress with all his might that if you try to take away works from faith and make faith that has no works a means of justification, you fail. And he's right. Let's see, watch how he does it. Show me your faith apart from your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. So faith and works are not the same. Works are the means by which faith is shown. So faith produces works which become visible and therefore works uh, vindicate or demonstrate or confirm faith. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless, dead and useless? Absolutely true, yes. Faith, if it isn't the kind of faith that has works or is apart, is, is producing works, then it's useless and dead. Was not Abraham our father? Now, here he becomes really risky, justified by works. Now, Paul did not talk that way. And the question is, when James talks this way, is he contradicting Paul? Abraham, was not Abraham justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith, Abraham's faith was active along with works or by works or expressed in works and faith was completed, brought to its consummation. What the goal of faith is, is to produce a life of works. And so James is taking these works and these works, this, this act of obedience that faith gave rise to and saying it was those two together which was the means by which Abraham was justified. Now, does he mean to contradict Paul when he says that? And Scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God, believed God, and was count, and it was counted to him as righteousness. That sounds very much like what Paul wants to do with that text. And he was called a friend of God. You see, here comes the, the red letter problem that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. You say, whoa, so the reformers are wrong. Well, if James means 
not by faith alone, the way Paul was ruling out works, then there's a contradiction. And we don't have a reliable scripture. But if James means something different, then we do have a reliable scripture and Paul and James cohere. Let's finish it. For as the body apart from the spirit, and the word pneuma also means breath, the body apart from breath is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. So the body corresponds strangely to faith and breath or spirit corresponds to works. And you see what he's saying. The body, if it doesn't produce breath, is a dead body. Faith, if it doesn't produce works, is, is dead, just like it says up here. It's useless here. So he returns to where he began, which inclines me to say that what James is doing is not contradicting Paul. But let's, let's be fair. Let's put them right beside each other. James 2.24, you see that a person is justified by works, not by faith alone. Romans 3.28, we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of law. My question is, and my suggestion is this. When James says, a person is justified by works and not by faith alone, doesn't he mean, in view of the way he is saying faith is dead without works, doesn't he mean here, not by faith, which is alone. In other words, which has no works. Is he saying that faith is part of the means by which we benefit from the righteousness of Jesus as the foundation of our justification, and some deeds of our own, not based on faith, but contributed from our own will, because I say it not based on faith, because once you've got faith uniting you to Christ, then you've got the righteousness of Christ counting as yours. This, I think, is what Paul meant and what James means. Namely, we are not justified by faith, which is alone. And look at the way Paul says it. This is Galatians 5, 6. In Christ... Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but what counts for everything? What counts? But faith working through love. The kind of faith that justifies, that counts, is faith working through love. I think if James read that, he'd say, yes, 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 that's exactly what I mean. I mean the kind of faith which justifies is the faith that works through love. It's the kind of faith in Hebrews 11, over and over. By faith, Abraham obeyed. A obedience flows from faith. They're not the same thing. They're not conflated. Here's the way the reformers spoke, very carefully. See if you don't think this honors both James and Paul. Faith, thus receiving and resting, receiving and resting on Christ and his righteousness is the alone instrument of justification, yet it is not alone. That's James' whole point. It is not alone. If it's alone, it's dead. It is not alone in the person justified, but is ever accompanied with other saving graces. And is no dead faith, but works by love. All of that is an attempt to say James really matters here. Paul did not mean to contradict James. James did not mean to contradict Paul. So, faith receiving, resting, which is what faith does, 
works are the overflow and the fruit of that. Resting on Christ and his righteousness are the alone instrument. By faith, we are united to Christ who becomes our righteousness and our justification. But that faith, as soon as it comes into existence, is the kind of faith that is never alone, but is always accompanied by other saving graces. I think much of the misunderstanding between the Reformers and the Roman Catholic Church in those early days was owing to the fact that the Reformers perhaps didn't bend over backwards to make plain that this kind of unbreakable connection between faith and a new life of works in Christ exists. So I conclude. Therefore, the Christian gospel includes this truth, the gift of spiritual life from the dead and of justification, God's being 100% for us and not against us, is received through faith alone. We have life and we have justification by the receiving act of faith alone. The good works which flow from this gift receiving, gift enjoying faith. The good works which flow from this gift receiving, gift enjoying faith are not the basis or the means of receiving and enjoying this gift. They are its fruit and they are its confirmation. Let us be forever thankful, therefore, and full of praise that the God of all grace justifies the ungodly, puts us in a position of being 100% for us by faith alone, so that on the basis of that sweet peace of acceptance, we now have the freedom and the courage and the boldness and the wherewithal to be about a new life of works of love.